Now let's take a look at how you can restore the master database. Let's say you lost the uh, master database files. In the last video, uh, I have showed you how uh, you can delete the master database files while the database is running. And then you can just restart the instance and it will recreate the master database files from the template. But you might have created several databases and the logins and then so many things that is stored in the master database. And then you cannot simply uh, afford to, uh, you know, uh, recreate from the template uh, database every time. So you need to have a backup plan for the system databases as well. And when you uh, when you lose the master database, uh, if that happens, then you should be able to restore the database, master database from the backup. So uh, let's see how you can restore the master database from the backup. Okay, so first uh, let's take a backup of uh, master database. Okay, I deleted the master database uh, MDF and LDF files. So if I stop if I restart uh, the uh, SQL server, it is going to recreate from the template. Okay, but I have to restore from the backup. I just took the backup. So let's restore from so I have the backup here, right? So the restoring the master database, uh, the the concept is pretty simple and uh, straightforward. Uh, it is as same as the Windows version. In Windows, uh, you know, uh, if you lose master database, uh, somebody deletes the master database files, or you lost the master database files because of some corruption, you got to restore. So the procedure is same. But there are few things you need to uh, remember. That's why I wanted to show you this, uh, how to restore the master database. Okay, in Windows, what you do, okay, you stop the SQL server and you start the SQL server in minimal configuration mode. Okay, so this is how you just start the, you, in Windows, you have the SQL server.exe, which is uh, you know, something similar to uh, Linux, uh, you know, both are same. Uh, you have SQL Server and you start the minimal configuration mode, but in Windows, you don't specify this parameter. You just say minus M, start the database server with minus M option, minimal server configuration mode, and then you can run the restore database, master database from the backup file. Okay, so it works. But in Linux, you have to specifically say CMD, otherwise uh, SQL CMD, otherwise you cannot, uh, you, you cannot log in from SQL CMD. Okay, so that is one thing. So I was following uh, the Windows version of restoring the master database. I couldn't connect to SQL, uh, SQL CMD. So let me show you that. Not only that, the important thing is when you run the SQL server in minimal configuration mode, you have to run that from MS SQL account because the SQL server configuration files are all owned by MS SQL account. You have to log into that specific account and then start the SQL server with that account. If you run the SQL server in minimal configuration mode using the root or any other elevated account, then this path will be changed. The files, the files uh, under the MS SQL will be changed by root or some other account, whichever account you're using. Okay, so never ever run the SQL server under any other account other than MS SQL. If you do, then the, the files under MS SQL, uh, MS SQL will be owned uh, by, by, the, uh, by the account you are running. And then you cannot start the SQL Server. Because when you start SQL Server, a SQL Server service is uh, that runs from MS SQL account and it cannot access somebody else's uh, files. So simply it won't start. And it won't tell you the problem either. Uh, you know, it's, it, it says the service is running, but 
you cannot access the, the it is not really doing doing the job you know basically the service it, will, it shows that pid is running process id for the uh, sql server but you don't see anything in the error log saying that what is going on and you will be scratching your head so two things you need to remember you must have to log in to uh, change the account you must have to run this from ms sql and then you have to specify the sql cmd okay these two things you have to remember that's why i wanted to show you this uh, restore master database otherwise it's the, the procedure is same you just uh, run the sql server in minimal configuration mode and restore the master database no big deal okay so we just deleted the master database files let's uh, restore So the user is MSSQL, then the group is MSSQL. Okay, the SQL service is running. You can log into. This, the PID is running, right? System CTL status. This shows uh, nothing, but still you see that the, the, the MS SQL process is running. Okay, so now no, you cannot connect. Uh, so what you have to do cancel it out okay since you don't have the master database files even you cannot log in with the uh, sa password so now you have to you have to recreate so let's do this if I say like this so it is running okay so now I have to Okay, it is running. So it stopped. So database is now up and running. Now let's log in. Now it says uh, login, you cannot connect. Uh, the server is in single user mode, only admin can connect. So now you have to, what you have to do, you cannot just uh, say like this, you have to use uh, SQL CMD. That way you are saying start and start the database in single, uh, single user mode. And then uh, you can only connect from SQL CMD now you should be able to connect okay so then
so it restored once it restored it's not running so let's running now so let's uh, refresh so now you got these two databases okay so that's how you restore the the master database so now let's uh, take a backup from the windows I have this is my windows operating system um, So you can see here, this is uh, Windows uh, Server. My host is Windows Server. It says, so the, I have the SQL Server running on this uh, the Win source. This is Windows uh, box. These three. Okay, this is the domain controller, and these two are uh, two servers. Uh, they are connected to the domain. They are joined to the domain. So if I run the same command in the against the the SQL Server, this this server, it shows. My host is Linux CentOS. Okay, so now I'm going to <coughs> create a database test db3 on Windows. Insert one value. Now let's take a backup. Okay, I took the backup on my Windows Server. So this is uh, SQL backups. This is that. Copy the backup and paste it in my the laptop. My laptop's uh, D drive. Okay, so paste it here. Now I got the testdb here and I copy this file from testdb3 to this server. Okay, so I use this SFTP program in mobile XTERM, upload the file, go to D drive, upload the file. So I have this file here. Okay. So to restore this, uh, to restore this backup file, um, I need to change. So copy okay. Uh, okay, let's I copy. I have this test DB, but it's only by root. Okay, so now I copied. So this is the backup from Windows. I just want to show you that you can take a ba uh, database backup from Windows and restore it on the Linux. Nothing much. So I just copied the backup. Now I'm going to the Linux box, restore the database, select the test DB3, and then the original file name is C drive. Restore it as a C drive. No, relocate to uh, SQL data. Okay, so now I got this uh, tables. I think I 
created the oh I created the table in master database sorry actually I was thinking I created I created the table in test db3 where is that okay so I all right, all right. so I just uh, created the windows uh, database backup and then restore it on Linux server okay so you can do that mm, it works perfectly fine so far you can even set up the log shipping between the windows server to the the linux server you can create a share on the windows server and you can let uh, linux server to access that share and set up the log shipping or you can create a samba share on this linux server a smb share and then you can and then windows server can access that smb share and copy the backup files allow backups onto the smb share and then the linux can take that uh, log backups and restore it on the uh, linux instance uh, so you can set up log shipping between these two so sql service uh, 2017 on windows linux you can copy the databases uh, log backups the the files for the formats whatever the however way it takes a backup and the way it stores the data it's all same interchangeable you can just copy the files from mdf and ldf files and restore there i haven't tried that mdf ldf file let's do this um, uh, <clears throat> so let's uh, we so far what we did we took backup from windows and then restored it on the linux uh, can we detach the files here and then attach the files here can we do that okay so let's uh, uh, detach the <clears throat> okay this time i created the uh, tables here so let's uh, detach the test db3 and then let's drop the database on linux server okay now i have the sql data test db3 paste it here sql logs uh, locks are not required, you know. Just uh, okay. Let's uh, let's copy. Okay, yeah, log is not required. Just the database file is enough. MDF file is enough. When we detach it, just uh, do a checkpoint and push all the changes to the database file. So this MDF is just fairly enough. Now let's go here and then. copy that mdf file into the linux server we have it okay so now you have that mdf file here let's attach this mdf file on the linux server attach instead of attaching from here oh yeah okay let's attach my data file is in backups folder which is okay um Even MDF and LDFs you can attach and you can detach from Windows and then move it over to the Linux and then attach there, or you can take backup from Windows and then restore it on the Linux server, which works fine. 